I know I need to trim that one. Um, and the first thing I'm going to do with this is I'm going to move this guy out of our way so we can actually do a little work. I've got this guy here. Okay. And I'm going to take my fettling knife and I'm going to come and I'm going to trim up the bottom of this. And this is just because I threw it as a bottomless form. If I wanted to, right, and I was a hand builder, I could just build this on my piece of PVC pipe, and that would give me a nice round form. I'd spend a little time smoothing on the inside, making sure that I don't see my seam. I work on the outside, making sure I don't see my seam. Okay. So I got myself my form here. And I'm going to come now with my MKM roller, and I'm going to give myself some texture. I didn't want to spend a lot of time doing the basic form tonight, because I don't know. I feel like there's lots and lots of videos this week of people throwing stuff. And I figure I'd go and show you a little bit more finishing techniques, and maybe some decorating techniques that would make your work a little bit more fun. And hopefully, if you're working at home in your studio, or you can sneak into the studio at your school, or any of those sort of things, keeping your social distance, right? You'll have some time to actually do some extra decoration as opposed to just making some quick forms. Okay. So what I did here is I took my form with my MKM roller and I used my little zigzag pattern here. Okay, gave myself a nice little pattern there. And then our studio is really fortunate. We're right around the corner from a Michaels and I've got this really cool little octopus. So I'm gonna use him as a stamp because he kind of amuses me at the moment. Underneath my apron, I have a narwhal shirt on and he's stabbing a bunch of sailors with his horn. I don't think narwhals actually do that, but I don't know. Seems like a fun idea today. Okay, then I'm gonna put another one over here. Hey, Bradford, how's it going? Okay, so I'm gonna push that little guy into there. Okay, so you can see I've got these cool little octopi now, I think. Right, they're pretty fun. And I've got that nice little MKM pattern thing going on. Okay, so I'm going to set this one aside because this one's really soft because, well, the more you play with the clay, the softer it gets. And I did one a little earlier this afternoon, right? Same kind of basic idea. Okay. okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to flip this guy over and I'm going to alter the bottom of him just a little bit. I like to have, have a little bit of scallop to it. I like the idea of seeing some light underneath it. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to give me a little divot down here. Not too deep because I'm making a flask and I want to make sure that I have enough to last me a while. Okay, come all the way across, connect the two lines. I'm gonna peel that off. Okay, so now I've got a nice form going on. And if I feel that this is still too heavy, I can always thin this out a little bit. I didn't spend a lot of time cleaning these forms as I was throwing them because I knew that I was going to alter them and change them. Okay. So now I've got my form done. And I cut myself out a little foot. Okay, that's going to sit on top of there. And what I did is I cut this at a nice little 45 degree angle. Well, not really 45 degree angle, but you know, just a little bit of an angle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on this way. And this is going to make it so that when I attach the bottom, I don't get a lot of extra spill over on the side. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some slip out of my throwing bucket. 
And for those of you hardcore throwers, right? Yes, I know, we're diving into the world of hand building. Don't tell anybody. At our new studio over on Arville Street, we're quite fortunate we have a studio that is for wheel throwing, and we have a studio that is for hand building, as well as our store, and some other rooms for doing various things like kids classes, glazing, okay. So when I'm scoring, I wanna make sure that I'm really well scored, right? I wanna make sure that that's really well textured so that when I stick these guys together, I'm sure that they're gonna stick really well. Just cleaning up my little scratches that are a little a little bigger than I need, right? I know my wall is like a heavy quarter of an inch. I've got that about a quarter of an inch. I stick these two bad boys together. Okay. And look at that. Kind of like Ikea furniture, it just fits together. Okay. So now I'm gonna come in with my rib and I'm gently gonna massage these together. And because I cut that at an angle, I'm not ending up with a lot of overhang. I don't have a lot of material that I need to get rid of later. So I'm going to show you a little trick that I do sometimes that helps make that go away. So I'm taking that kind of idea that Martha Grover has with that bottom and giving it a little bit of undulation. And then to that, I'm gonna add a little bit of texture. Clean that up just a little bit first. Okay. So I'm liking the way that's looking. And now I'm gonna grab another roller and I'm using this really cool kind of zebra-y one. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna go all the way around. Okay. And I didn't paddle this, so using that extra little texture on there helps to push those two pieces of clay together so they meld real nicely. Okay. And I'm going to indent this just a little bit, and that's going to help to ensure that the bottom and the walls join together very nicely. Okay. And I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to put a bat underneath that. It'll help me just a little bit right now. Okay, so the inside, right, you can kind of see that it needs a little attention. So I'm going to come over here with my wet paintbrush. And I'm just using a really stiff paintbrush. This is like the cheap one that I got at Michael's for, you know, six for a dollar. I'm not even sure if it's as good as a boar hair brush. I think this is probably super stiff, cheap, cheap hair. Okay. So now when you look inside, it looks nice and pretty, right? And that's just so that you don't get your cocktail stuck in the bottom. Because I don't know about you, but if I'm taking a flask out of the house, I'm going to mix a cocktail. I'm not just going to bring some vodka, even if it's really good vodka. Okay. So I kind of like that. That looks pretty good. Now, I've got another one of the little shoes or little tops that I cut out, right? And that one's a little bit small. So I'm just going to tap this on the table and stretch it out just a little bit. That's a little better. And when I do this side, I'm going to have this bevel coming across the top onto here. So once again, I don't have a lot of material that I have to cut away later. And this clay setting up nicely. You can almost hear that scoring going on. It's nice and leather hard. 
Why aren't you allowed to drink vodka anymore, Miss Jenna? I mean, you could make rum cocktails. Or gin cocktails. Or Tawaka cocktails. That was for Kathy. Okay, so that one's nice and scored up. And now I'm going to come over here on this side, and once again, I'm going to score this really well. Right, so this is really, you know, anytime that we're hand building stuff, it's all about slipping and scoring. We want to make sure those scores, those scratches are really nice and deep. They're not really deep, but we want to make sure they're nice and rough. So we've roughened up that surface really well so that we're making mud. Okay. So I kind of like the way that's looking now. Got that going. I'm going to add just a little bit more slip up here onto the top of my vessel. And I kind of like the way that's going. Okay. So, I set that across the top, and I'm going to make the walls of this fit into this shape. All right? So, I'm being very delicate so I don't squish my textures or my octopuses. Octopi. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to come back with my paddle. I got this one last year at Enseca. It's really fun. I don't know who made it, but I think it's super cool. Just gently, gently tapping, right? When I'm tapping, I'm never tapping straight down. I'm always tapping at a slight angle, right? Because what I want to do is I want to stretch that clay together and I don't want to compress my lid into my form. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back with my rib here and I'm just using my little red rib. And see how I'm doing that? It's just gonna kind of smooth out all that clay, make those joints come together very nicely. Okay. And I do have a little bit right here that's a little bit too long so I'm going to come back again with my feddling knife and I'm just going to trim that away. Right. Okay. Throw those little scraps into my water bucket. They'll become slip for next time. So now, this little guy is coming together pretty well. I feel like he looks pretty good. He feels pretty stable. Right. And if you notice, I haven't put my neck onto here yet because I want to make sure that this form is really sealed well. If I put that neck on too soon, I have a hard time attaching the top because it wants to collapse. I also then can't come back and alter this at all. So now I can give this a little squeeze and a little love and it's going to start to be kind of a little more interesting. A little bit cleaner form. Okay, we like that. Woohoo! Okay, so I also threw off the hump a bunch of little necks, okay? My little necks are about, oh, I don't know, an inch and a quarter tall, give or take. And I'm gonna put one of those on there. So this is the kind of the, the fun little part of this. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna score that really well. Texture, 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 as somebody said. And then I'm gonna add a lot of extra slip onto this. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to just set this down where I think I want that to be and I'm going to give it a little wiggle. Count to 10, lift it up. 
and you can see, hopefully, I've got that nice little ring, right? That little ring is going to tell me where I need to cut. So I'm going to come over here with my feathering knife, and I'm going to cut out that little circle. Sound effects make it better, I think. Okay. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to score this super well. Okay. And I'm going to use my cleanup tool. Like this is one of those little temporary guys. I don't know what you're really supposed to use it for. I mean, I do, but since I don't do greenware decoration very much, that kind of bisque stuff. This tool works really great for that. So it cleans up the inside of that little hole a little bit so I don't have any little burrs in there. I know if I was doing class for real, I'd use much more colorful words. Okay. I'll throw a little extra slip onto there. I'm gonna set this guy onto there. And I want to look down and I want to make sure that I don't see any clay wall sticking through the bottom, right? I want it nice and clean. It's nice and stuck, right? If I can lift that up a little bit and it doesn't come off, that means it shouldn't come off in, at any other point. Okay. And now I'm going to take the little cleanup tool again. I'm going to go on the inside and I'm going to clean up that edge. I'm just going to take those little scraps of clay out of there. I have a little sponge over here that I'm wiping this stuff on. Okay. And now I can stick my finger there and I can lift up. Or I can take the edge of my, my tool here, this little curvy edge. And I can lift that, that wall up into the bottom of my neck to make sure that it's sealed really well. And I know that later, once I glaze this, the glaze will also help with that. But I never want to rely on the glaze if I don't have to. So I'm going to take my little paintbrush here. We're going to clean that up super well. And I think that's looking pretty clean. The big trick on this project is, tr is not trying to do it all at once. Like I literally threw all of my cylinders at 3.30 this afternoon and it's 6.20 now, give or take. And my wall is still pretty soft. I don't want to attack it with a heat gun. If I attack that with a heat gun, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna dry the outside of it, the wall, and then as I start to manipulate it, the moisture from that clay body is gonna come through that skin of dry clay, and it's gonna make it gushy, technical term. Okay. So I'm gonna, I'm just puffing it up just a little bit and then I can control that how I want it to look, right? So I think that's pretty spiffy. And then I've got this little guy, right? He's got two ends on him. I think this came from Michael's from the pastry department, cake decorating. And I love the way that it feels on your hand. If 
you're doing an atmospheric firing, like a cone 10 reduction or a soda firing, something like that. I love the way that this texture accepts and breaks all the carbon in the kiln and around your pot, right? So we got a little something, something going on. Right. So I need to clean up that edge just a little more, maybe a couple of spots. So that looks a little nicer. It's amazing the things I see when I'm doing a video that I don't necessarily see when I'm just building at my wheel. All right. Hello, Stotzer. Okay. So, last, was it last year, Peter? Or the year before that we had Ian here? Last year. Last year. We had Ian from Spectrum <coughs> come out. And he uses these, or he showed us these raised accent colors, which I think are super cool. They're like little puffy paints for clay. So they kind of hold their shape a little bit. So since I'm doing an octopus over here, I figured I would give him some little sea bubbles, decoratively placed. And if you notice, there's no music on because Brandy keeps yelling at me that when I do videos, if I have the music on, she can't hear me. I think it's just really because she wants to be able to post these onto YouTube without... Um, having to go back and edit them. So I've got this really sweet little banding wheel that's at a really cool angle. At least I think it's a cool angle. There we go. It's kind of fun, right? Cool. Okay, guys. Well, hopefully, you'll have some time to. Uh... Hey, Mike Biggs. Play around with some of these things. Hopefully we'll be open soon. So be safe, guys, and we'll talk to y'all later. Bye.